Hello and welcome to another ICS Impulse video. I'm Wendy Crumley Welsh, the product manager for ICS Impulse. Today we're going to be talking about skew deviation. The skew deviation test provides the ability to diagnose central disorders primarily in the brain stem. The purpose of the test is to assess the patient's ocular alignment using a cover on cover test. The purpose of this test is to identify if vertical ocular misalignment occurs as the result of covering and uncovering the eye. The patient is typically in a sitting position. They can be in a more supine or caloric position with the head up 30 degrees. The patient's eye movement is recorded with the eyes in the primary position. That means the patient is staring straight ahead as the eye is covered and uncovered. So regarding pupil detection and calibration, those two topics are covered in separate videos. Goggle placement. The goggle does not have to be as tight as for head impulse. It needs to be tight enough so that it stays in place, but if you're not moving the head, it does not do, need to be as tight as it does for head impulse. Eye video recording. And whether you choose to threshold the pupil, make sure pupil tracking is working appropriately by using pupil location or grayscale image. Just note that when the eye is being recorded, it is always being recorded in grayscale. The synchronized room video allows you to record the room or the patient. Um, and then the last two things, external monitor and presentation remote. If you click this button here, external monitor, you can then put the image of the eye up on a large external monitor as well as on your laptop. And then the presentation remote. This allows you to start stop the test, but most importantly, it also allows you to note when you covered and uncovered the eye. And I think the test is much easier by using the presentation remote than by using the cover on cover on the software. So let's go to software here. So you want to do a skew deviation test. You need to come over to the navigation panel over here to the left and choose skew deviation. So as you see, there's only one option for skew deviation and there's no drop down. So everything's ready for your test to begin. You want to instruct the patient. They are going to be staring straight ahead. You are going to cover and uncover the eyes. Now this is different than vision denied because you're going to use something similar to an ocular occluder. And if anybody has had an eye exam before, you've seen the eye doctor use this circle on a stick and cover and uncover your eyes. Same type of thing. You need to use something just to cover and uncover the eye. They do not need to be in complete darkness like in a vision denied solution. So here you can see in the software, this button here marks cover and cover. But like I said, if you have the presentation remote, I think it's much easier to hit the button and stand in front of the patient as you cover and uncover or stand beside the patient. So here's an example of us performing skew deviation on a subject. So regarding data analysis, now this data is on a subject that has normal results. Red is the horizontal trace, horizontal eye position trace. Purple is the vertical eye position trace. Down at the bottom here you see these blue eye that's uncovered. A solid eye is covered, so it's like the lid closed. Uncover, covered. Now for a normal person you basically get a flat line. You don't see any eye shift. And you can see here her average eye position shift was 0 0.5 and 0 0.6. But in an abnormal person, you would see that the eye would actually move when you cover and uncover the left eye. And then you can play this back. So you would play back the trace, the eye video, and the uh, room video all together. And it can be played at normal speed or in slow motion. So in the tab info, what you have is the test type, it says skew deviation, the operator, the calibration, the test date and time, how long the test took, so the elapsed time, and the average eye position shift in degrees. If you go to the test tab, you would have a list of all your tests. So every time you did a skew deviation test, it would be listed here. And you can go into the remarks tab, adding your remarks, or you can come in here and add remarks as well, if you want to say something that was unique about that test. If you have an existing patient, the skew deviation test is under ocular motor. And this little man in the chair staring at a dot denotes our ocular motor test. So if you did a skew deviation test next to that person's name and information in that column with the little guy in the chair, there would be a check mark saying that this an ocular motor test was done on this patient. 
So now how do you interpret skew deviation? What's abnormal skew deviation? Well, the average eye position shift should be greater than one. Now this actually may be greater than one to two. There's still research being done that looks at um, difference between vestibular neuritis and stroke, so difference between a peripheral disorder versus a central disorder, what denotes an abnormal average eye shift. Now in the past, uh, most of this has been done visually, and obviously your eye is not as sensitive as the camera and the goggle, so that's why there may be more research coming out that may change this value, but right now we believe that greater than one is what the current research is saying. Now, the other thing is if you read research regarding skew deviation, often it's reported in how many prism diopters the eye had moved. And basically a prism diopter is a deviation of one centimeter on a flat surface one meter away from the prism. Well, we don't measure that way with obviously with a goggle, but just so you know, one degree of eye movement is equivalent to 1.75 prism diopters. So if the right eye was higher when you first did the test, it will move downward when the eye is covered. And if the right eye is lower, then it will move upward. A vertical misalignment of the eyes is caused by damage to the prenuclear vestibular input of the ocular motor nuclei. It's caused by a right-left imbalance of the vestibular neural firing, particularly otolithic inputs of the ocular motor system and this is secondary to unilateral damage to otolith pathways. So when we talk about otolith, this term should be familiar to most everybody because this is also what VIMPS tests for. So in the research you'll see that a lot of times they are doing skew deviation along with VIMP testing. Now what conditions would give you an abnormal skew deviation? Well it's usually seen in the presence of a brainstem stroke, most often ischemic strokes in the lateral medulla or pons. It has also been reported in patients with cerebellar injury from stroke, multiple sclerosis, or trauma. It has principally been identified as a central sign in those with posterior fossa pathology, and skew deviation could be a specific sign of central disease in patients with acute vestibular syndrome, or AVS. So there's been a lot of research looking at peripheral versus central brainstem disorders using skew deviation. And then here is a couple of references for you, um, one by Brodsky in 2006 and then one in 1996.